Hello there, Lisa Fitzgibbon here from Project 7 and welcome to our check-in service. So this is where we're going to hook up with our previous headline producers and our alumni from all around the world. We're going to find out where you are, what you're doing, what you're working on, how you're doing it, that kind of thing. Anyone who's been to one of our Project 7 events knows what an intensely challenging and rewarding week it can be where forever friendships are made and creative connections that last are created. And uh, this is the check-in service. So we're going to try and put everyone together so we can hook you up with your Project 7 kin. And today we're checking in with producer, musician and songwriter, Project 7 alumni, Nick Morbath. Described as the Mr Big of the Oxford music scene, Nick has played numerous roles in the success of many Oxford bands. From his early days as a rehearsal space and venue owner, he went on to successfully run Oxford's premier live music venue, The Zodiac, where he promoted more than 2,000 concerts, including local legends Radiohead and Supergrass. He also promoted the famous Radiohead outdoor concert in front of 40,000 fans in Oxford's South Park in 2001. As session keyboard player of 1990s bands Ride and Hurricane No. 1, Nick toured the world playing numerous concerts and festivals, including Glastonbury Festival's main stage. Now based at his Evolution Studios in Oxford, Nick produces an incredible output of music from local and international artists. He has produced several film soundtracks with Radiohead's Phil Selway and is still a central figure in the vibrant Oxford music scene. Hello, Nick Morbath. It's Lisa Fitz from Project 7 checking in. How are you? I'm very good, Lisa. Very good. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. It feels like ages. Well, it has been ages since we've seen each other. Yeah. yeah. How are you coping with everything? You all right? All right, yeah. I mean, it's a lots of homeschooling, uh, lots of swimming in the river, a uh, <laughs> lot, lot less. I had quite a lot of mixing to do when this all started, so I had about three weeks of nearly a month of stuff to do so mm. that so so I guess a lockdown was a bit later for me but all the recording is uh apart from the tv uh and voiceover stuff has completely has pretty much stopped for the moment great and is it gonna pick up again what in the next couple of months are you taking studio bookings now or what are you doing yeah I've got a big I think it's going to be really busy because I think stuff's just been postponed so I think I think everything will just get moved basically so I'm not too worried about it being um you know being quiet afterwards because I've got a big list of people waiting to get in I bet you do. Can you explain to us where you are, like where your location is, a little bit about your studio? In my, I'm in my studio, Evolution Recording Studios, a small child in the background doing <laughs> studying on a phone. Um, <laughs> so that's, that, that, that's where I am at the moment. I'm in the, in, in the studio, uh, yeah, just because it's the quietest place to talk to you. And it's the centre of a lot of music making in Oxford because yeah. you're not only a musician and a producer, but you're a promoter, uh, ex-venue owner. You are the heart and soul pretty much of what the scene is in Oxford, aren't you, really? Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've vowed never to promote again. I spent years and years well, running the Zodiac and then promoting. And I just, I, I, towards the end of it, I just sort of had enough and wanted to go back to being creative, which is when I set the studio up about uh, seven years ago. Okay, well, let's just unpick that a little bit, Nick, because you've got a really interesting history here because you started the Cold Room rehearsal space in Oxford way, way, way back. Yeah, years Um, ago. The whole Oxford scene has pretty much come through either the Cold Room, the Zodiac, uh, the venue. Can you just give us a little, uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about your journey from uh, the start in the Cold Room to where you are now? I had sort of a sensible job for about uh, for about a year, and then hated that. And then, so, well, I started a company with someone, sold my shares, and went off playing around Europe in a band called Frank Fish and the Finns, which was really good fun. Mm-hmm. And but the bands I played in there then didn't really make any money. So I thought, how can I make money out of music? So set up the re- the rehearsal studios. Uh, and one thing led to another. All these great bands like Radio, well, they were on a Friday then, but became Radio. Had all these bands came through, mm. uh, and then went on to set up the Zodiac um, with with them and Supergrass and Ride as my shareholders. And then I went off playing touring, uh, playing session keyboards for Ride and Hurricane Number no. One, did a bit for Almighty, all sorts of people really. 
Yeah. And then uh, the Zodiac was fantastic for 11 years. I had loads of fun, but I kind of decided towards the end of it that if I wanted to stay alive, it's probably time to do something else. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sold that to the Academy Music Group and then set up the studio and haven't really looked back since, really. Brilliant. And t- tell us a little bit about the music scene in Oxford in the 90s, because a lot was going yeah. on. I mean, a lot's still going on now, obviously. It's a different scene. but Yeah, no, we're still, still doing really well. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, even, you know, now, you know, there's, uh, you know, Foles and, uh, you know, well, loads of bands still, still doing it. But the 90s was great because uh, Oxford's actually, as a city, is quite small, but it's always had a lot of good live venues good a good infrastructure mm. and then i think at one point it had more signed bands per capita than anywhere else in any other city in the country so oh, really? yeah God, but it's only 150,000 people in oxford so mm. and quite often when you go to other cities that have uh, got the same population you think thank god i live in oxford do you know the funnily enough not many of the bands have come out of the university but what it, but it means there's a big uh you know for promoting it was always good because it was a big young captive live audience mm, mm, definitely I, f- I found that the vibe in summer usually sort of slows down a little bit but it picks up again in the autumn and the spring when the students are back in town yeah, absolutely, totally. I mean, we used to. Yeah, I mean, we 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 lose money in the summer always because there wasn't a lot going on, and you know, although Oxford has a lot of tourists, they don't really like going to gigs. So, <laughs> um, so we we we'd definitely you know uh, make hay while the students were here, extract their grant checks off them. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your studio because you've got a lovely Trident Series ATB desk there. I have, you? yeah. I was talking to Sam Williams, who's guy who produced Supergrass, lots of other people, he's a good friend of mine, and he he said, I know when I you know, when I told him I was setting up the studio, he said, I know where there's I know where there are some mixing desks that you should really get because I was going to buy a new desk. So Sawmills, they've got a Trident ATB as well, but they bought two more because they were going to build a huge 80-channel one, which they never did. So they just sat in, sat in a damp shed for, uh, you know, for uh, 15 years. So I went and bought both of those desks and we made a really good desk up out of... Oh, out I of, see. Uh, I love it. I mean, it's just a lovely desk. It's a lot of, I mean, I've had people coming from France because they like the Trident sound and uh yeah and once you know that, that that stuff was built really well so mm. you know once once we got it all working i spent a lot of money getting restoring it but we really did it properly new mm. patch bay and everything and, it, and i think it's with mixing desks it's a cumulative thing so you know i i you know you can tell the difference between maybe an ssl and an eve and a you know but it's when you've got a whole when you're recording a whole band through something that's when the character really really mm. really really starts to show so what other equipment have you got there nick what's kind of in your arsenal of equipment at uh, my, evolution my favorite things uh i really like i've got a, a universal uh la610 which i absolutely love um as a compressor very warm i've got i've got some really old ones that um came from pinewood studios from the 50s which are really warm as well old mike pre's um, what are the favourite bits of stuff I've got? I mean, lots of mics that I really like as well. Um, but loads of yeah. uh, guitar amps and stuff. and Lots cabin. of amps, yeah, lots of amps. So just, just I think I've got all the, thing, the things that I wanted to, to, to sound quite nice. So, I mean, with guitar amps, the last guitar amp I bought was a Roland JC120 because <laughs> it does one thing incredibly <laughs> well. Um, you know, it's got, it's got two channels and one of the channels is the worst sounding guitar channel anywhere. And then you've got the chorus channel, which just, you know, if you want guitars to sing above a mix, that kind of, that really bright, really, you know, and it's, uh, so, uh, but yeah, lots of different, th- you know, got old Fenders, got, got a Laney that I really like and a LR50 that I love for distorted people mm. are always turning up with amps and I go you know with it with lots of pedals to get a good distorted sound and I just say so just plug it into there and turn the gain up and it every, every time they go god that's great we'll use that so, yeah. <laughs> and also you've got that beautiful Hammond you've got Rhodes yeah. I mean you've got pretty much everything covered yeah you? good yeah the Hammond's lovely mm. um got piano got yeah fender roads got a lot i was a keyboard player so i've I've got lots of old synths i've got you know some really old analog stuff like poly 61s and i've got all the you know the stuff that i had 
I guess in the late 80s, you know, DX7, D50. Um, but I really like, I mean, I like a lot of the plugins as well. I mean, when I'm mixing, uh, I tend to, I use a lot of universal audio stuff, which I really, really like. Mm. Uh, all the UAD stuff, which is really, really good. Uh, mm. So plugins have come on a long way. Oh. I mean, I've got, I've, I've got an SSL uh, stereo um, comp bus and I've got the plugins as well and I tell you what there's not not a lot of difference you know at the end of the day if you're going to run a whole mix through it then it's worth using the real thing but, but you also do a lot of collaboration and you've recently been producing uh, film soundtracks with Phil Selway from Radiohead yeah yeah uh, let me go was one of them how how's that collaboration come about and and what's your process we've been working together for quite a long time so and it's just really easy and we're both uh you know once you work with someone more you know what works we've got there's a really good team of people great you know the lithium quartet for a lot of strings mm. uh, and it's just it's it's really good fun you know some of the projects like let me go is really big you know you have to st- keep organized as i I've, I've learned um but we've been doing lots of stuff uh and actually while the we've been working on it well we stopped now because it's quite difficult but uh we've been working on his next album as well so they've, they've had more time radiohead they're all doing kind of their own things a bit more so he's got more time so we've been doing yeah we've been doing you know music for radio for all sorts of things really so oh that's yeah. handy it's quite nice to do different things too isn't it i find sort of doing yeah. just bands all the time or doing just voiceovers oh, or everything and it's nice to have things to work to. I mean, actually, we did with with some of the films. So, on Carmilla, which was well, it's it's been postponed because of the lockdown, but that's about to come out, which was the D- Defoe novel, the original kind of Dracula vampire oh, cool. thing, and it, it's beautifully shot. But a lot of that, we we yeah, you know, we really worked picture. Sometimes we'd like we decided that. To keep, to have it in keeping with the music, we wanted to do all the the sound effects as well, and we'd have stuff up on the screen, and some of it's quite scary. We'd be running around hitting things and hiding behind things, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it really, yeah, no, it really worked. You just watch the film and make, you know, it's uh, it, but having it in keeping with the music. So yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm looking fun. forward to that coming out because it's it's a really beautifully shot film. What's it called again? Carmilla. Camilla, oh, I love it. Yeah, it's an old novel, but yeah. And then there have been, there was a trashy American um, series about it, but it's, uh, you know, uh, but this this isn't trashy. They've done it justice. Quite erotic and classy and, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, good, we'll keep our eyes open for that. Yeah, yeah. Premiere, red carpet affair. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Two metres metres away from each other. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so you've worked with so many musicians, producers. I mean, it's endless. But is there any piece of advice that anybody's ever given you that just kind of has stuck with you about music production that you want to share with us? Well, I, what I loved about I love about Project Seven is it's a great way. You know, everybody's so open, so you get to work with really well-known producers who don't who, who are quite happy to share their secrets. It's about enthusiasm. It's not about oh, it's my secret. I'm no, you know. So I've, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. A, a lot like that. I mean, my advice would be never stop learning. You know, every time you know, I work with so many different people, and sometimes you know, you'll get you'll you'll, you'll be working with someone who's eighteen who will show me something on Logic, and you'll think, well, why didn't I think of that? Because everybody does things differently, yeah. uh, you know, and 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 you just you can learn 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 from everybody. Mm-hmm. And and again, you know, the, the the if it sounds good, it is good. You know, I've 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 had people working here who've come out of college College who are very afraid to do anything that you're not really supposed to do. You know, why are you putting that microphone on that? It's not the right microphone. Well, I, you know, if it sounds great, then it is, you know. You were with us at Project 7, 16, 17 and 18. So yeah. you're a repeat offender, a yeah, proper yeah. alumni, Project 7 alum- yeah, alumni. Yeah. Um, and you'll be joining us at Rockfield, uh, hopefully yeah. at our next event. So... Oh. Um, What's your most memorable Project 7 moment, if you've got one? Can you share with us? Oh, well, 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 I mean, youth is quite funny when, because I am really a keyboard player. I can play the guitar badly. <laughs> and uh, I, I, he, he said, it's, he said, you know, we, we brought in there and I thought, well, I'll bring this Strat along just in case any, you know, you bring stuff in case I brought a keyboard up and I thought in case anyone wants to use it, you know, it's quite, and I, 
came in with a guitar and he just looked at me and he said, can you play, I want you to play in, in G flat major, I want you to play the theme of uh, Taxi Driver <laughs> on the guitar. Uh, um, and I kind of, and, you know, so I hit, you know, hit the, hit, hit, got the computer running and I kind of fumbled about and he looked at me and he said, you're not really a guitar player, are you? I said, no, I've just brought it up for somebody else to use. But I, it was fine. But then but we had a really great session and uh, it was fine when I got to a keyboard. So. <laughs> yeah, but not, but, but just lots of, lots of, you know, lots of good. I mean, Ronnie Size was quite funny as well. We did a song and he said, I don't want it to be drum and bass. I don't want it to be drum and bass. And we all did stuff and we went down and had lunch and he stayed up and we came back. We kept, we came back up and he started playing and it was, boom, boom, boom. he said, sorry, couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to throw some quick questions at you just to finish yeah. up. With. Okay, here we go. So you've got to choose what you. One of them. One of them. I have to tell a lie, a lie about, but we'll do that when we get to it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, exactly. Yeah, just there, no, Lester, I, I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, cat or dog? Cat. <laughs> dog, really. <laughs> Did you hear that, Celeste? I'm getting a look over there. I'm getting a look. <laughs> oh, bless her. Okay, wine or whiskey, Morbath? Oh, that's a difficult question. But, uh, a difficult question. Uh, can't I say both? No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, probably, all right, then if it's on a desert island, it'd probably be whiskey. Any particular kind? Yeah, Lafroig. Yeah, is peak, that a single yeah. malt thing from a single malt, very PG? Yeah, I, okay. yeah, take yeah, lovely. lovely, lovely. I think Will would approve. Yeah. Uh, okay, acoustic or electric? Uh, probably electric. Mm-hmm. Stones or Beatles? Oh, that's really hard. As um, well, I think love them both, but I think the Beatles probably. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, boxes or briefs. Um, uh, uh, boxers. <laughs> a brief, a normal, like, sort of like, really small pack. Yeah, boxers. Yeah, yeah. You had to think about that, didn't you? Depends yeah. whether I'm on the bus or on the train. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Okay, town or gown? Oh, town. Gherkins or olives? Oh, again, difficult. Probably gherkins. Gherkins. Yeah. Uh, young ones or two Ronnies? Uh, love them both but I have to say two Ronnies because my dad went to school with Ronnie Barker and I met Ronnie Barker quite a few times um I used to go to a school reunion so he used to have and he was a lovely guy so yeah oh, but cool. I mean again go. love both young ones are brilliant but. bit of history uh okay yeah. car or motorbike motorbike and triumphal Harley <sighs> even though I've got a Harley or a V-Rod which most Harley owners hate I would still probably in the, it's the only Harley I like so probably Triumph <laughs> there's always a story yeah uh okay here we go Rhodes or Hammond that's a hard one. Oh, probably Hammond yeah and lastly Night Owl or Dawn Chorus uh well that's changed used to be Night Owl I'd say Dawn Chorus now yeah oh Nick it's nice to catch up thanks for your time yeah. and uh and we'll see you soon, hopefully. And well, yeah. Uh, all yeah. your Project 7 family, all the best. And we look forward yeah. to uh, hearing your music. Yeah, look forward to cashing up and socially distancing. <laughs> 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 all right, lovely. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. For more info and to apply to one of our Project 7 songwriting retreats, visit us at project7.com.